What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we're in the brand new 2025 Toyota Crown, courtesy of Younger Toyota in Hagerstown, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So we are in this one today because there actually is a new trim level for the 2025 Crown. A few nice upgrades to go along with that. And ultimately, this is a luxury sedan from Toyota with absolutely brilliant fuel economy. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering, fuel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. So as I mentioned, there are several trim levels for the 2025 Crown. First one being the XLE starting at $41,440, which is a $1,390 bump from the 2024 Crown, in case you were curious. Limited starting at $45,950, Nightshade for $48,765. And lastly, the Platinum being the one we are in today, starting at $54,990. So as you can imagine with all of those trim levels, there are a couple different power plants below belonging to the crown as well. First power plant is going to belong to those first three trim levels being the XLE Limited and Nightshade. Powering those three is a 2.5 liter four cylinder with three electric motors, putting out 236 horsepower, 163 pound-feet of torque. Power sent to all four wheels through a CVT. Zero to 60 time for that one, approximately 7.6 seconds. With MPG numbers coming in at 42 in the city, 41 on the highway, with nearly a 600 mile range in a vehicle the size of the crown that's incredible taking regular unleaded fuel but so then there is that other power plant the one belonging to the platinum trim level that we have today that one is powered by a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder with an electric motor putting out 340 horsepower 400 pound feet of torque power set to all four wheels through a six-speed automatic with paddle shifters which we will be testing out here in a little bit zero to 60 time approximately 5.7 seconds that's plenty impressive there with mpg numbers coming in at a respectable 29 in the city 32 on the the highway again taking regular unleaded fuel and so before we do any kind of fun paddle shifter or acceleration test here in the crown did want to mention you guys the drive modes there's a little toggle switch located just behind the shifter drive modes are going to include eco normal sport and ev and then sport plus for the platinum trim level only that we have today so ultimately adjusting things like the shift points throttle response and the steering sensitivity so as soon as we get out of this construction that we're sitting in here let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the paddle shifters and acceleration here to the test i want to see how quickly the paddle shifters are going to react for us here and Let's see how quickly we can get our new 25 crown here up to speed. All right, got her straight away here in three, two, one, go. Dang. <laughs> okay, yeah, that is plenty quick. Paddle shifters, they were meh. They're pretty much as expected, nothing crazy there, but um, yeah, that is a heck of an acceleration with over 300 horsepower, 400 pound of feet of torque you're definitely not going to have any issues emerging onto the highway one of the best parts is because because we have that electric motor there wasn't any turbo lag because it is a turbocharged engine there wasn't any of that just because of the electric powertrain there so that was incredible heck of an acceleration here for the crowd i love it but to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so up front you will find 12.9 inch ventilated front discs in the back 12.5 inch solid rear discs as far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes that comes in at 127 feet so a little bit on the higher side of things but it's not a horrible number as far as braking feel goes it's not bad it leads a little bit on the firmer side of things so i personally don't have any issues with the braking feel there so certainly gets the job done the touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars but to go along with all that if you were to go with the platinum you also get an adaptive variable suspension so that's the one I love because that monitors each shock absorber individually, not only adjusting to the road imperfections, giving you a smoother ride, but it also tightens up that suspension during heavy cornering, giving you better handling as well. So it gives you the best of both worlds. And it's a brilliant thing because that's always one I look for when it comes to suspension components because that really does give you a noticeably smoother ride. So right now I can tell you guys 
the ride quality is excellent so definitely absorbing the road imperfections here in Hagerstown quite nicely so I've had absolutely no issues when it comes to that so as cabin noise goes this is the perfect test I'm going 55 miles per hour right now so I'll let you guys be the judge this is one of the first things I muttered to myself when I first got on the highway is how incredibly serene this cabin is so it's a very luxury light cabin for sure uh, as far as steering feel goes that leans a little bit on the looser side of things but then again I'm not in sport driving mode right now and it does adjust the steering feel dependent upon the drive bed that you put it in let's go ahead and put it in sport that's better I like that so you can definitely tell the difference dependent upon the drive mode that you put it in so go ahead and put it in sport if you wanted that heavier feel to it if you wanted a looser feel you got normal and eco and so on so yeah I kind of like that something for everybody right but then touching our rear visibility, I can see perfectly fine out of my rear view mirror there. So definitely not going to have any issues there. Then on top of that, touching on forward visibility, rain sensing windshield wipers do come standard on the limited platinum and nightshade trim level. So whenever this thing detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's going to automatically turn on the windshield wipers for you there. So it's just one less thing you got to worry about. Kind of like automatic headlights. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2025 toyota crown all right so here she is you guys the new 2025 toyota crown finished in black yes that is the creative name of the color that toyota came up with for this one but let's go ahead and touch on that new nightshade trim level real quick because that is the new trim level for 2025 essentially all of the chrome is going to be swapped out for black uh, you got matte black 21 inch wheels you have storm cloud or a black exterior only there's the two color options for the nightshade trim level in case you were curious but let's go ahead and start with where this one is made taking a look at the bin first character is the letter j meaning that the new crown is built and assembled in japan as it should be i love that starting up front large gloss black front grille does come standard to the sides by led headlights for the xle and then quad led headlights for the limited trim level and up you guys can see those to the side there they do come with led daytime running lights you get the automatic feature you also get automatic high beams so if you have your high beams on at night and it senses the vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there so very convenient feature there and i did want to also mention there are some two-tone color themes available we don't obviously have that with us here today we got the all black but you could do a different color roof if you wanted to so that's kind of cool too but that pretty much rounds out the front end let's go ahead and swing around to the side all right so now since we are around to the side of this one this is my favorite look this has a heck of a looking side profile kind of like a fastback or sportback look in the back end of it but anyways chrome window surrounds do come standard you do have that floating roof line towards the c pillar there that definitely looks good as well taking a look at the side mirrors they are power adjustable heated side mirrors they will be power folding with puddle lights and led integrated turn signals all that coming standard so that's pretty darn cool Take a look down at the wheel setup. They're of course gonna differ dependent upon the trim level that you go with. For example, you get 19 inch machine finish alloys for the XLE and Limited, 21 inch matte black alloys, like I was telling you guys for the nightshade, and then 21 inch machine finished alloys for the platinum that we have with us here today. But again, heck of a looking side profile. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of this one, all the way to the top, you will find a body colored shark fin antenna course led taillights or really an led light bar does come standard it looks pretty darn cool got some trim level badging back there the hybrid max badging found on the left hand side of that trunk there that is going to be specific to the platinum because that's the engine configuration that we have with us here today of course got some grooved accents under the taillights i'll get up a little closer so i can show that to you guys it's kind of a interesting design kind of meant to mirror the uh, taillights you guys can see kind of a groove grooved uh, look to the taillights as well of course you got the crown lettering spelled out horizontally just underneath all of that and just underneath everything you do have dual exhaust outlets they are all tucked away of course so having said that we'll give this a shot this is the hybrid after all so i don't know if it's going to work but as always here is that exhaust clip
All right, so Benalsis, we are around to the back of the crown when it comes to opening that rear trunk. It actually is a power trunk, which is wild. There's a button on the key fob. There's actually like a 007 hidden button on the trunk itself then as well, which is pretty cool too. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 15.2 cubic feet. That is a ton of space for a sedan, I'm telling you. If that was not enough space though, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for even more space then if you needed it. I liked that LED cargo lighting came standard. You don't always get the LEDs in the cargo area, so that was pretty cool. Then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you do have a spare tire, which you guys know I love compared to the fix fly at least. That uh, was nice. Then make your way up to the rear legroom. That comes in at 38.9 inches. For reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in the second row there. You do have a rear center armrest with cup holders. That comes standard. You get rear ventilation coming standard as well. Dual rear USB charging ports also coming standard. And check this out. Get ready. Heated rear seats is now newly standard for 2025. That's one of the big changes in my book. I love that. So spoil the rear passengers a little bit. Gotta love it. Then make your way up to the front seats. Eight-way power adjustable front seats with power lumbar coming standard. Soft Tex upholstery is going to come in the XLE. However, limited trim leveling up is going to give you leather finishes. Heated and ventilated front seats now newly standard for the 2025 crown as well. So more big changes there. And I love kind of the gold accents found on the seats and really everywhere around this one. So that was definitely a big fan of that as far as seat comfort goes i always say toyota and lexus crush it with their seat comfort so definitely no issues here on my short little test drive i liked it but now let's go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel more gold accents by the way on that but it is tilt and telescoping it is power adjustable on our platinum trim level here it is leather wrapped it is heated which is newly standard for 2025. So perhaps all these reasons are why the XLE is a little more expensive for this model gear because a lot more stuff is now standard. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, heated steering wheel is now standard. So I liked that. Now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup though. Let me start by showing you guys the key. You got your Toyota crown lettering on the one side. Then when you flip it over, lock, unlock, and the button to pop the trunk, of course. But it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just to the left of the center air vents there. And so once started up, 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster does come standard across the board. And there are some cool little graphics of the crown when you actually change the drive modes as well. I did want to mention that to you guys. You got a little bit different colors, like you got a little bit more red hues with the sport driving mode, a little more green hues with the eco, for example, but wouldn't have minded a complete change of the gauge cluster when you change the drive mode, or at least a little more customization to the gauges overall, like Mercedes Benz does it, for example. They do a wonderful job with their gauges, but speedometer is going to be found to your right, and there are some steering wheel mounted controls. You can adjust what is on those gauges. It gives you how many miles you have left until you hit empty. Outside temperature, the list goes on, so pretty much everything could possibly want up there. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality here. A panoramic glass roof is going to come in the limited trim level and up. LED interior lighting does come standard. You get a wireless phone charger for all trim levels across the board as well. Dual zoom climate control also coming standard so both driver and passenger can set their own temperatures kind of just behind that wireless phone charger you do have a couple cup holders you got a couple usb charging ports as well then within the center armrest there's actually a decent amount of space in there you got a 12 volt power outlet in there as well along with another usb charging port there are home link controls throughout the three different garage doors found at the bottom portion of that rear view mirror Overall, wouldn't have minded a little more pop of color. Maybe it's just our particular spec that we have with us here. I do like the gold accents, but there's just a lot of black finishes, although a lot of soft touch finishes. I will give it that. So definitely a big fan of all of that. And actually a really nice gloss black kind of metallic finish surrounding the shifter here too. That was a big fan of that. But so now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here. You're going to find a 12.3 inch color touchscreen display for all trim levels across the board. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming with that. Wireless Android Auto, Apple carplay you gotta love that climate control information you can check out up there there's a nice little energy flow indicator since this is a hybrid after all toyota always likes doing that check out your driving statistics up there if you wanted to along with your radio information so when it comes to the sound systems there are two of them XLE is going to give you a six speaker sound system. Then the limited trim level and up is going to give you an 11 speaker JBL sound system. So having said that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio. Let's see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. Yeah, it's definitely 
actually not too bad. A good bit of base there. And uh, JBL is a very reputable company as well. I had a JBL uh, subwoofer in my first car back in the day. Never failed me. So I was definitely a big fan of that. So yeah, that sound system's perfectly fine for the crown. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen, at least, is when you do put the crown in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. And if you go with the platinum trim level only, you also have that panoramic view monitor there to the left, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, the Crown is an IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS. That pretty much says it all right there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard. You get driver and passenger knee airbags up front as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard. Toyota Safety Sense 3.0. This gives you a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, lane tracing assist, dynamic radar cruise control, lane departure alert with steering assist, road sign assist, proactive drive assist, and the blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert as well. Then if you were to go with the limited trim level and up, you're gonna get front and rear parking sensor. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Crown, the MPGs are excellent for a large sedan with all-wheel drive you gotta love it so without this platinum trim level that we have today you get over 40 miles per gallon but even with 400 pound feet of torque you still get 32 miles per gallon on the highway which is incredible for this thing all-wheel drive large sedan like this you gotta love that and a very luxurious ride overall as well and what i mean when i say that is it was a very serene cabin and very good ride quality because of that adaptive damping suspension so definitely a fan of that very unique look like the crown looks like nothing else on the road it looks like no other sedan on the road so i like it for that reason the only thing missing i think would be uh some really nice multicolor ambient lighting i think that would look really good in the crown a lot of sedans have it a lot of luxury sedans have it like audi like mercedes-benz and bmw so wouldn't mind seeing that in the future but um that's all i got let me know what you guys think of the new crown in the comments section below that's about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.